Number 39, the analysis shown in the figure below also applies to diffraction gratings with lines separated by a distance D. What is the distance between the fringes produced by a diffraction grating having 125 lines per centimeter for 600 nanometer light if the screen is 1.5 meters away? All right, so a lot to unpack. Screen's 1.5 meters away. So here's going to be, the screen is over here, right? And here's going to be your uh, diffraction grating. So the distance between them, which is X, is going to be 1.50 meters. What we're asked to find is we're find, asked to find Y. Okay, just keep that in mind. Now, um, what they tell us is they tell us the wavelength, right? So maybe I'll start writing down some stuff. The wavelength here is 600 nanometers. So just convert that right away to meters. Get it out of the way. All right, and then uh, what's next? So it also tells us now the number of lines per centimeter. But you know by now that we don't, th that does not represent the distance between, right, the lines. It just tells us the lines per distance. So we have to take the reciprocal of that. In other words, one centimeter, there's one centimeter for every 125 lines. Now this would give us then the distance per line, right? But I don't want to know the distance in centimeters. I want to know that in meters. So simply then just take the centimeter on the bottom, meter on the top, one meter for 100 centimeters, and just go to town. So now it's one divided by then parentheses, 125 times 100. And this now gives us a value of about eight times 10 to the minus fifth meters per line. Or in other words, this is now the distance between the lines or the distance D. Okay, this is the D value now. So now knowing the wavelength, knowing D, knowing that what I'm gonna do from the central max here, this will represent the first fringe, and therefore I know my M value, my M value will equal one. I now have enough information to use this constructive formula. It's constructive because we're talking about like maximums, right, and fringes. So D sine theta is gonna be equal to M wavelength. Solve this now for theta. Why are we doing that? Oh, well, you can't really move that. Why are we doing that? So just move the theta on over, I mean the D, and then all you gotta do is inverse sine both sides, right? So it's going to be inverse sine of then M, H, well, that's lambda divided by D. So why are we doing that? Well, I realize, look at the triangle, ladies and gentlemen. If I know this side and I know that angle, guess what, I can find that missing side. That's why I'm doing it. So this is then equal to the inverse sine of one multiplied by the wavelength. I said it was 600 nanometer light. We already converted it 600 times 10 to the minus ninth, all then divided by the distance here, eight times 10 to the minus fifth. Plug it on into the calculator. Make sure it's in degree mode, inverse sine. 600 times 10 to the minus ninth divided by eight times 10 to the minus fifth. And here we go. So theta works out to be a nice small value. It's about 0 0.4, nah, 430, I guess if I consider the rounding, degrees. So great, go to your picture. Theta is then 0 0.430. How do you figure out now why? Well, this looks like tangent to me, right? Opposite and then adjacent, I know. So tangent now of that angle is equal to the opposite side of the adjacent side. So the tangent of then 0 0.43 zero is gonna be equal to the y over then the adjacent of 1.5. Cross multiply those two values and y will then be equal to now tangent of that value, 0.43, blah, 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 using the exact answer multiplied by 1.5, what do we get? All righty, 0 0.0113. And that's in terms of meters, all right? If you need it in scientific notation, you know what to do. That takes care of that. Guys, thanks again for tuning in. I appreciate it. Help us out if you can and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. It really means a lot to us. It helps out the channel, all right? And it helps keep us producing content for you guys. Thank you.